Hello everyone, welcome to Capture One in One Minute, where we explore one feature of Capture One to make your workflow better and easier. Today we're talking about importing. Now, when you come to importing images, you have the option of doing adjustments, but the only adjustments you can apply are things that are saved as styles or presets. And this really makes an interesting point. Is there a way of building an optimal or universal style or preset that you would want to use when importing any image? And I mean any image, images that are very very explicitly going to be from a variety of types of subject matter shot in a variety of ways. And I think there are a couple things that would be beneficial and I think this will save you time. So let's take a look at what those are. The very first thing that I need to do is find an image and make sure that it has been completely reset, that no adjustments are done whatsoever. And I'm gonna come over here to my detail panel and I'm going to take a look at the lens correction tool. Here is what's interesting. Is I explored in a previous video, the diffraction correction is not turned on by default. Now, please note that when you have diffraction correction turned on and you save it as a preset or a style, it does not save it specifically to be turned on or in conjunction with the specific lens. It is merely turning on doing the diffraction correction. And so this really should be part of our import style. I'm going to leave on chromatic aberration and I feel pretty good about that. What else would be generic? What else would be something we would use all the time? And the next one is going to be your colors. So we're gonna come over to our color tool tab and we're gonna take a look at base characteristics. Now, if you do not build your own custom camera profiles using a color checker passport, you still wanna make sure that ICC profile is turned on to at least pro standard. But if you do make your own uh, custom camera profiles with a color checker passport. We're gonna to come to other and we're gonna turn that on. Now, the only reason to not do this is if you use a variety of cameras, in which case you definitely don't want to use the profile from one camera when you are importing images from another. But most of us are shooting images exclusively with our single primary camera. So let's make sure that we are using either the pro standard or a custom color profile. The next thing that we really want to see is, is there a basic type of adjustment that we would do upon importing images? And for me, I can tell you that bringing brightness up a little bit for all images is something I'm probably going to do. You might find that you push contrast as well. I do not move the contrast slider when I am importing images because I'm going to use the levels tool. So I can't build this in as part of my import style. But if you simply bump contrast a little bit to start, it would be appropriate here. Lastly, I am known for taking my black slider and bringing it down somewhere between negative five and negative 11 or something like that when I'm importing. So I'm gonna do a very conservative value and do negative five. This is going to deepen a little bit of shadows, make sure I still have some contrast and make sure that I have good color saturation. Now this is not by any means supposed to be a full edit, but it is something I'm doing with all of my images, which is great, that's what I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that as a style. I'm gonna come over to styles and I'm going to take what I have and I'm going to save a custom style. I'm gonna make sure that everything that I had selected is utilized here. I want my diffraction correction, my black slider, my brightness slider, and my camera profile. Exactly the things that I want. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna save it as import. This is now going to be my import style. You'll see that if I come to my styles, it shows up right here. Now, when I come to import images, I'll be able to select that and automatically have diffraction correction turned on, the appropriate color profile, and the basic way that I'm going to start with a little bit of my black slider and my exposure adjustment, and then I can do some work on top of that. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you in your workflow, and I'll see you next time.